welcome you all in this presentation related with the subject principles of industrial engineering and in this presentation I will be starting a new topic that is the forecasting. Uh, this is a very important uh, tool uh, we can say which is used extensively in the industries, enterprises, uh, also at the national and uh, state level uh, to see the way by which uh, the demand for the different uh, items uh, will be changing so that the organizations and government can plan the activities and events accordingly so that the demand for the items, goods and services can be fulfilled. Uh, especially in operation management and uh, in the manufacturing industries or the, uh, or the service industry also, it is very important that those uh, operation managers uh, are able to have the information about the kind of demand which will be there for their goods and services in near future. So, they have to see, the managers will have to see or look into the future demands using the various tools. So, basically uh, in forecasting, uh, the focus is on the demand, determining the demand of items or services which will be there in future. So, it is just like looking into future, uh, possible events in the future with respect to the demand so that suitable plans can be made to satisfy, to satisfy the demands. If this is not done, then there there will be lack of so many things, the organizations will be losing their profit, their competitors will be going ahead. So, it is important that what will be the demand for a particular item, for a good or for a service that is determined. So, uh, now when we try to determine the demand for future, it is important to see how far in future means the time horizon, time horizon. So, this time horizon is very important because uh, that will uh, be, uh, that will be important to see really what things we should look into as far as demand is concerned. So, uh, like say uh, the demand can be there for raw material for smooth running of the organization, semi finished products being uh, procured from other organizations or finished products. Uh, to be supplied to the customers to satisfy their demand. So, the, the demand as per the, the time horizon uh, can be of the, uh, can be for the different types like immediate requirements for say next week, next month. So, normally say up to 2 to 3 months, demand will be made for like say the raw material, the kind of units to be, uh, units will be required, semi finished product will be required to for the smooth flow of the production. So, uh, there uh, accordingly we have like say a short term demands. We can say accordingly the medium term demand and long term 
demand. So, short term demand is about the kind of the raw material, semi finished products, number of units to be produced. So, that that affects the like say scheduling. When, uh, when the production of particular kind of thing is to be started so that the, the, the items can be produced to satisfy the demand. Medium term is about uh, the aggregate uh, output which is needed. Uh, like say in short term we try to determine the detailed requirement of various items, uh, maybe raw material semi finished products for a smooth production. So, in very detail that uh, the, the demand for the various items is uh, determined for near future on short term basis for a smooth flow of the work. Uh, then. Uh, aggregate output like say a company is manufacturing number of units so a number of types of the products so what will be the general trend of the demand in in, in medium term basis like say 1 2 3 years what will be the general kind of product demand in uh, near uh, future say so for the somewhat medium term range the aggregate uh, requirement what will be the aggregate requirement for various products in a medium term basis and then there is a long term basis. So, as I said the scheduling and uh, uh, controlling kind of thing is, uh, is realized through the short term demand, medium term demand uh, uh, regarding the aggregate uh, planning for 1 to 3 years and long term demand like say 3 to 5 years. It is more about the strategic um, in nature like say what will be the general trend of the technology, what kind of the products will be uh, sold uh, and what will be their demand in, um, after like say 3 to 5 years. So, so setting uh, of those uh, possible demands for the newer technologies, newer products will be falling under the long term demands. So, we need to forecast these demands. So, depending upon the time horizon, depending upon the time horizon like say short term demands are helpful in planning, procurement, scheduling etcetera, uh, while long term demands like say use uh, long term demands using say aggregate uh, 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 demand of the different uh, items uh, that uh, will be governing the kind of the capacity planning, locating the new plant. Uh, is identifying the location of the plant and um, changing the layout in right in light of the changing requirement uh, of the items to be produced. So, the plant layout, plant location, capacity planning will be falling in the long term uh, demands. So, one so both these uh, um, will be crucial. However, it is easier to uh, forecast the short term demands as compared to that of the long term demands because of the various uncertainties. Uh, so, for short term demands uh, like say as I have said the forecasting can be used for both short term and long term uh, demands. There is another word which is also very commonly used that is called prediction. Prediction of the events in future. There is a very minor difference between the two. 
the forecasting is about the scientific, mathematical and management tools using the past demand data. So, it uses the demand data, it uses the scientific, mathematical and management tool to arrive at the, the demand forecast. On the other hand, uh, so uh, on the other hand the prediction is uh, based uh, on the estimates or you can say subjective estimates of the events. So, it is not scientific, but it is based on the skill of the manager, uh, is his experience and uh, judgment. So, considering the judgment, the all these are the subjective things based on the judgment of the manager, his experience and his skill, he can estimate the kind of demand which will be there. Uh, but this, this is very subjective, this is not uh, like say uh, data based approach, uh, it is the subjective based on the skill experience and judgment of the manager. For example, say a TV manufacturing company has got the demand of the TV screens for producing the TV. So, say in January the demand is of the 20 units, for February it was of the 22 units, in the March it was of 18 units. So, if uh, likewise if for April, for April is it is say again 20 units. So, if it wants to determine the kind of the demand which will be there in May, so, the company will be using the, the past demands, the demands of the uh, uh, mo, uh, recent past for the TV screen to determine the kind of demand which will be there in the next uh, future, in the next immediate future say May or uh, June. So, like that. So, for next immediate future, if we use this past data using the statistical mathematical and management techniques, if we determine using this past data, if we determine the forecast say 21 for the May, so that will be the kind of the demand forecast. But if say a new kind of the TV is being produced, a very new item is being produced, then we do not know really how many units will be consumed of that TV. So, this is the case when we have the stable system and there is a continuous demand for that kind of system in the market. The moment a new item which does not have the uh, record of the demand for which the record of the demand is not available, in those cases certainly we have to rely or depend on the predictions like for this kind of the item how much demand will be there in. Similarly, like say, so in this kind of a situation when new item is being, a, a, a new product is being launched for which demand record is not available. So, in those cases the prediction kind of thing will be useful. So, uh, now we will see that how the, with the change of the time horizon like say in x axis we have the time and in y axis we have the demand. So, the demand pattern how with the change of the time horizon this uh, uh, the, the demand and its use uh, is uh, modified like say there are three levels long term demand medium term demand and short term demand. So, short term demand for a very short period say the demand is identified, long term say for long term the demand is identified, 
So, uh, here the long term demand is primarily used for the strategic decisions like say how to develop the layout based on the kind of the product life cycle. Uh, then what will be the location based on the changing market scenario or what will be the kind of the capacity for which a plant uh, should be there considering the demand which will be there after 3 to 5 years. So, considering that how the capacity is to be planned. On the other hand for short term basis it helps in scheduling and controlling planning the, the like say the manpower material requirement. So, that the demand on short term for the raw material semi finished goods or sub, uh, sub components. Uh, so, here we may get the detailed information about the demand of the various items. In medium term basis we get the aggregate requirement for intermediate time period like say to 1 to 3 years and for short term basis uh, we get the detailed demand and very long term basis that the demand which uh, will be forecast uh, for a very long period in future um, uh, for the strategic decisions. So, uh, let us say we need to get the latest information, information on the recent demand data based on this we go for forecast of demand in near future which can be used in various ways like I said short term demand, long term demand and in uh, intermediate uh, term demand. So, say uh, the demand forecast can be used in the production planning like coming out designing products, designing processes. Uh, then uh, the decisions related with the equipment investment, capacity planning. This is uh, this is one type of use based uh, use uh, of the forecasting the demand. Another is scheduling to satisfy certain demand what kind of the material that will be needed, how many uh, manpower, how much manpower will be needed. So, uh, the operation scheduling material and the manpower requirement all that is, uh, is based on the demand uh, forecast. So, that the items can be produced in the required quantity as per the kind of the demand which will be there, uh, which will be there in the future then it is also used in controlling the system uh, like production control. How, as per the demand we can adjust the rate of production whether it is to be accelerated or uh, moderated. So, the production rate considering the, uh, the kind of the demand which will be there. Uh, considering the, uh, the demand uh, also inventory control, uh, then the labor material control and then uh, we have the cost control. So, uh, if we know how much, uh, uh, how many goods and services are to be produced in the next, uh, in near future we can plan the activities in very effective way. So, that the required volume of the goods and services can be produced at the minimum possible cost through the proper production planning and control. So, determination of the uh, 
uh, demand through forecasting is extremely useful. Since uh, the demands, uh, demand obviously can change with the time. So, based on the past data uh, 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 plot between the demand versus time is developed. So, using the data of the past regarding the demand, it may be weeks, it may be months, it may be years, it may be quarter variation with respect to the change in demand say, say uh, 2015, 16, 17, 18, 19. Let us say the demand for particular item is plotted uh, and this the, the kind of trend which shows uh, the kind of the variation in demand as a function of time is called the time series. Time series shows the variation in demand as a function of time that is called the pattern of demand. Uh, so, the relationship between the demand as a function of uh, uh, time, relationship between the demand and time we can say as, uh, is, uh, uh, is shown by the time series and there can be the different patterns of the demand. One type of the pattern is like where demand is almost constant, it is not fluctuating. So, we can say the constant demand. The demand sometimes for some of the items fluctuate as a function of time during the, uh, during the year like say from January to December, let us say July. So, demand for the and likewise intermediate months here in between and here we have demand. So, starting from the January to December as a function of uh, with the time the demand for certain items change in a particular fashion like this. So, this is called like say in particular season demand is very less, in particular season demand is very high. And this pattern is repeated every year or in every season. So, this kind of the demand pattern variation like this, this is called seasonal demand. And when the demand continuously changes as a function of time, like say earlier demand was too high and then it went on gradually decreasing as a function of time. Or so, this is like the decreasing trend of the demand. Uh, so, this is termed as trend demand where either it is increasing or decreasing. This is the seasonal demand where a particular cycle with respect to the time with uh, the demand varies cyclically as a function of time that is called seasonal or cyclic demand. So, the demand can show the continuous increasing trend also. So, the, both these indicate whether it is continuously increasing or decreasing as a function of time. So, this is called trend demand. Demand pattern can also be a combination of these like say the demand and the time. So, the demand can vary in this manner also. So, what it is showing that demand is increasing continuously at the same time there is a cyclic variation in. So, it is a combination of the trend as well as seasonality effect is there or seasonal uh, trend as well as the uh, se seasonal demand pattern as well as trend demand pattern both are present in this case. Now, the demand as a function of time since 
uh, as I have said this is the constant demand, but the demand actually may not be constant there may be little variation. So, the demand is like say showing a very close variation with respect to the. So, when the variation in demand as a function of time is not much, but uh, that so the and it is almost say constant. Similarly, the, 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 the demand points are following very closely a particular trend or pattern like this. So, in all those cases where the pattern line is very close to the actual demand data as a function of time, this is the situation corresponding to the low noise demand. And when the, uh, the, the actual demand fluctuates significantly corresponding to these demand patterns, then we say high noise demand pattern. Like say in case of this constant demand pattern, one point is here actual demand point, another actual demand point is here, then here, here. So, the points are the actual demand is fluctuating a lot about a particular type of or particular pattern of the demand. So, this uh, corresponds to the high noise, say high noise demand, a uh, high noise uh, demand pattern like this going far away from these uh, pattern lines are, uh, is indicating the presence of the high noise demand. Now, uh, we will see uh, the another aspect is about the demand stability. Demand stability is about the is about uh, that how much demand pattern remains stable means uh, the demand shows a particular pattern a specific pattern for how long time whether it is just for 6 months or for 4 years like say the demand is constant for say just for 6 months or for 4 years. Similarly, the demand is cyclic in nature just for 2 months, 6 months or for many years. So, if the demand is stable means uh, uh, the demand stability means if the demand pattern uh, is the same for longer period, then we say that there is a stability in demand. And if the demand pattern changes rapidly, then we will say that that is not a situation of the demand stability. So, when there is a no demand stability, then forecasting becomes difficult. So, means when there is a demand stability, it is easier to forecast the demand as compared to the case when there is no demand stability, which means the pattern of the demand is changing continuously as a function of time, which makes the forecasting job difficult. So, uh, because uh, we can have certain equations and methodologies to forecast the demand when it is showing the demand pattern is stable. Then, uh, we have already talked about the other two terms which will be used in forecasting is like uh, dependent demand, demand is of the two types, one is dependent. Dependent demand is about like demand for an item, demand of an item is directly linked with the production volume of some other item. Uh, demand for an item is linked with the demand of any other item. 
So, that is the dependent demand case whether it is semi finished product or finished product or uh, the raw material which is directly linked with the production volume and independent demand is about and another one is the independent demand. So, in this case demand of an item is not linked with the volume of the any other unit which is being produced. So, mostly we focus on the dependent depend, uh, dependent uh, demands determining the uh, or forecasting the uh, dependent demands in which case the demand of an item is linked with the volume of uh, the any other item which is being produced. Now, I will summarize this uh, presentation. Uh, in this presentation basically I have talked about uh, what is the purpose of the forecasting and uh, what are the basic terms which are used uh, in forecasting, what are, is, what are the different types of the pattern uh, in demand which are observed. Uh, in, in the coming uh, presentations we will be talking about the different methodologies which are used to forecast the demand. Thank you for your attention.